most people are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement worth having. When they're doing these things, they're thinking about how do I make a career that will last, how do I produce enough income to care for my life and care for my bills and allow me the travel and the excitement and the adventures I'm looking for outside of my work hours and opening to looking for how do I retire. When can I retire? Will I retire early? Will I retire late? And that's where important works by Kiyosaki and Tracy and others come in handy. It teaches us how to be smart and work smarter, not harder. In life, we have moments of time to tell someone how we feel, and sometimes we blow it. We completely blow that opportunity because we're not prepared, we're not in that moment, or we're literally caught with our pants down. That sort of kind of happened to me this morning. I was in the midst of pulling my pants back together after taking my morning little standing stool operation, and openly, some woman started to walk up on me on the alley. I couldn't see who it was. I kind of sort of recognized the walk, but I couldn't see who she was in her face. She asked me, could I help you? Could she be helped by me? And openly, I can't say that I was really willing in that moment. Well, I didn't have my proper gear up to be able to be very that helpful. I was a little pissed off, too, because it was pretty obvious what I was working at, and she didn't have to approach me in those minutes. If she had waited two minutes, I might have been a lot more civil. But I've had a lot of people putting a play on me, pretending to be one thing or another, and literally, there is a social nuance in different settings and in different places that teaches us whether or not someone is real or not, or a player or not. And openly, the extended hand, introducing yourself like an executive at a bus stop, doesn't really happen very often. And frankly, it's usually something later in the conversation, not at the beginning, unless it's a true networking event. You see, most people who play these games don't recognize that people who are incredibly networked know the difference. They know how social things work. They know how different structures in different places with different types of people work. They change their language, they change their format, they change their clothes to fit in to where they're going. At least most people do. Those who want to stand out loud and proud go right ahead, but you'll be struggling all your life to create real-world networking connections that will impact your career, impact your livelihood, and impact your income and earning opportunities. I have a lovely friend, at least she was my friend at one time, who has literally 4,000 Facebook friends. But my point has always been, and how many of them would die for you? How many of them would put their life on hold waiting to see you? How many of them would really give up their entire inheritance, give up their entire life's worth to show you how much they love you? And if she can answer that all of them will, wonderful. But if she can only answer one of them well, I'm pretty sure it's me. I've already done all that. I've died, nearly went to heaven, and came back over that situation and opened it. I get life signs every single day, and the last two days, the angel won't shut the hell up about her, and it makes me sort of crazy because I can't handle not seeing her. It's been a long time since I've seen that lovely face. The last time was walking through Target, but I was not allowed to go because if I did, she would have been armed with me. It was a little bit after I made the proposal of marriage to her, and openly, I was dying for that answer. I'm still waiting. Um, it's almost a year now, and I'm waiting for her answer to my marriage proposal. It was sincere, it was well written, it was definitely helped by God, and frankly, I don't think she gets how much her life can go to the wrong place if she doesn't start listening to the Lord. If she doesn't start listening to God on timing, she could screw up her entire life. She could screw my life up, and that's pretty clear that she's sort of done that already, but not intentionally exactly, just not knowing what to handle, how to handle things. Sometimes maturity comes later in life. Sometimes people don't know how to handle the situation that they weren't expecting, but always in person, over coffee, over pizza, over sushi, over some meal is usually best. It doesn't take long for someone to rewarm themselves to someone they once cared for, they once loved, they once called hun, and openly, that's the word I'm most longing to hear. But my man would also work just fine. The truth is, my hands are sort of a mess. It means holding her hand will be through gloves, and openly, I'll need her loving care to get things taken care of. But in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. And when we sit here and we think, okay, there's this homeless guy talking on a podcast sitting behind me. What the hell do I do? The answer is absolutely nothing. Your life is your life. You chose where you sat, and people try to be as quiet and conscientious as possible. Unlike the people earlier today in a different Panera where they were so outrageous. Also, I had a video that I worked on pretty hard that got deleted by someone in that pool of that using that internet. And I didn't really appreciate that. That took a long time to record, and openly, it took a while to think it out. I don't like when people involve themselves in my life. It's not their right. If I've not invited you in, then you're not welcome in. If you want to come in, you have to ask permission, and that's no different for any other human being on the planet. 
There are many people who think they have the right to monstrously mock and humiliate a person, to teach them a lesson. I'm sorry, Lord God Jesus did not stay in this planet to have you decide that you're going to teach a man a lesson that the Lord teaches on his own. The Lord does not teach lessons through people. The Lord teaches love, peace, honor, commitment, regard, and respect through people. Unfortunately, other lessons are learned through people who don't know how to love, who don't know Lord Jesus, and who don't ever profess his name. I get a little ill when I go to a community dinner sometimes. While I'm thankful for the food, I'm enjoying the company of the young people. I get upset that I never hear the word of the Lord mentioned. I never hear it at a table. I never hear it in prayer. And I never see a presentation from God to help to continue to convert and evangelize young people to remember that there is a God and that they need to be paying attention to the social cues and nuances that the Lord gives them. Those little imprints in their mind that says, do this or don't do that. That keeps them safe, that keeps them in power, and that keeps them living their life safely for the rest of their life. In this moment in time, I want to say one thing to one girl. That's it. I've waited a long time, possibly seven, maybe eight years now, I can't recall, but openly I'm getting older. I'm more tired, and I've had law enforcement completely obliterate my rights to my health care. They've destroyed my life, they've put me in debt, and openly it was not any of their lawful rights to do one thing to my life. When I tell the story about what happened to me in jail, they will hopefully have heads rolling, because they had no lawful right to put me in a tower and to utilize their little mental health games to play out on my life as if it was a Batman movie with the Sandman. I don't give a shit what they think of what I have to say, and I don't care if you believe it or not. Your lie was thinking that you had the right to monstrously get into my property when I visited a church for fellowship and faith and worship. That was an ill-willed idea that these senior citizens think they have the monstrous right to do, even if they worked in the military. They don't have the right to fly into someone's ear or get into someone's pockets and take one thing. It is molestation, it is rudeness, it is illegal, and frankly, it's theft. In life, we have moments of time to show people how to behave and in the house of the Lord, and that is always done with loving kindness. Pastors sometimes struggle with all the roles and hats they have to wear. In those cases, they must have a team of people, which means they have to have a prolific, growing population. A church of 45 is not going to last. A church of 20 will probably fail. But who's the failure? Is it the congregation? Maybe. Is it the pastor? Definitely. And why do you know? Because they're not producing an interesting enough sermon to bring people, to get people, to interest in others enough to bring in new members and new help. My father was an active participant in our church. Back home. We named it after our late brother who died. And that was selected by the congregation, but it was the name he put forth. It stuck because it's, well, the name of one of the disciples. So, of course, Mark is going to stay with us. When I'm in a difficult situation, I may not give my official real name because I don't like people thinking they have rights to monkey with my food and put me out for hours. That happened at a Taco Bell. That's happened at a bakery called Puck. That's happened possibly at a McDonald's a few times. And frankly, I know it's happened multiple times when I was traveling with my vehicle. Sheriff, lie, steal, and cheat people out of a life is something I've believed for some time now. It has been my overall experience with them. There has not been one good experience is not true. There's just not been enough quality or quantitative experiences with them in a positive light that has made me believe that they are doing the right things by people for their situations or circumstances. In life, we have moments of time to tell someone how much we love them, and I have been professing that love for a long time to one person. There's only one person I want to marry. There's only one person I want to hold. There's only one person whose kiss I long to know, and there's only one person whose tongue I'd ever let remotely close to this old, old mouth of mine. But I'm being honest. What about you? Are you someone who plays around with everybody and you don't think about the sin of that, or are you just so busy messing about that you don't think about your own future, your own medical health, your own cellular health, or anything to do with your spiritual soul that has to partner correctly in order to prosper and live a long life? In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone, and I pray to God she's listening today because I long to see you, my love. I can't wait to hold you. And don't play. The absolute truth is I can barely breathe thinking that I'll never see you again. It makes me so unhappy to not see you every single day, to not hear your voice every single moment, and to not hold that hand of yours that I've longed to hold for so long. There is nothing in this world that will make me stop loving your life. 
Your life force means the world to me. It means everything to me. And frankly, it's what I live for. It's what the angels speak about with me on a daily basis to keep me going in a land of hope, <coughs> where hope is often hard to find. Because people steal our rights, they steal our belongings, they steal our intellectual property, they steal our ideas, and they think they can make it better, do it better. Well, maybe they can if they got resources, and finances, and a people network. But in life, we don't have the right to steal from the house of the Lord, which means whatever has been gifted to one person is not the gift to someone else. Thank you for listening, and I hope you're having a blessed day. In the future, more and more of the Dragon Priest podcast will be slipping through this stream. I hope you'll pay attention and start to listen to hear the voice of the Lord speaking through me each day. Amen.